Hello, welcome back. I'd now like to talk to you about how you actually go about uh, calculating the describing function um, for various uh, nonlinearities, since this is central to um, being able to predict uh, limit cycles using the principle of harmonic balance. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so we're going to focus on the setup where I have um, some static nonlinearity with input y and output e. And we're going to focus on the special case that the static nonlinearity actually looks like this orange curve here. And this type of nonlinearity is called a relay. And let's just quickly understand what it does. Well, if we put in positive values of uh, y, the output is just equal to plus h, whereas if we put in negative values of y, the output is just equal to minus h. So this is the static nonlinearity that we want to look at, and we want to um, find its describing function. So what do you do? Um, well, as you remember, um, this whole method was centered around saying that uh, y of t was approximately equal to sine uh, a times sine omega t. And this constant a, this was giving us the amplitude of this limit cycle that we're looking for, and omega, the frequency of that limit cycle. And the describing function is just based on tracing this signal around the feedback loop and finding the conditions under which you approximately find that all the equations are balanced. And this was the condition of harmonic balance. Um, and to do this, we uh, calculated the describing function. And how did we do that? Well, we just introduced the signal e of t, which is the output of our nonlinearity, which is equal to our function h acting on y when y is equal to a sine omega t. If the input is periodic, the output is periodic. And it can be written as a Fourier, and therefore it can be written as a, a Fourier series. Um, so e of t is now some periodic function, and it has Fourier series on this form, uh, where we have a n cos n omega t's plus b n sine n omega t's. So this is our Fourier series uh, representation of e of t. And then the describing function, um, this thing, which was a function of a, was just set to be equal to, uh, is it b1? Yes, b1 plus j a1 over a. So in order to find n of a, we just need to find the Fourier coefficients b1 and a1 as, a fun as functions of a. So basically, we just need to find out what e of t is and find its uh, corresponding Fourier coefficients. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And the first step in doing this is working out what the signal e of t is going to be. And um, at least I think the best way to get a handle on this is to just draw uh, a set of axes something like this, and, and start just by drawing one period of the input y of t. So our input function y of t, it looks something like this. This is the period. Um, it has amplitude a. What is the period equal to? Well, it's just equal to 2 pi over omega. Omega here is the frequency. Um, and then, yes, a is the amplitude. And so this, this is y of t. And now onto our picture, let's just draw on what e of t is equal to. And now what we said was that if we input something positive into our um, relay function, we get out h. We input something negative, we get out minus h. So on this portion of the input, the input is positive, so the output will just be equal to h. So we'll get this, and then at uh, t over 2, things flip to being negative in the input, so our output similarly flips to be minus h. And this pattern repeats. So this square wave function, this is going to be, um, this is e of t. And now all that remains is to find um, the, Fourier co the first Fourier coefficients for this particular function, e of t. And there's a formula for this, and I certainly hope you will have seen uh, this formula at some point in your past. Um, but anyway, this is what it is. And the first Fourier coefficient, um, or the, the a1 term, this is equal to 2 over t integral from 0 to t 
of e of t times cos uh, omega t dt. So this is the formula for a1. And the formula for b1 is similar. You just replace um, the cos with a sine omega t dt. And to finish things off, we just need to actually evaluate these integrals. But um, maybe before we do that, it might help to, well, we need to work out what this function here is, because this is the thing that we've got to integrate. And maybe it will help to build a, just a little quick graphical picture for what is going on. So in this first integral, well, here we have time. This is cos omega t. Um, so that's cos omega t. This is e of t. So what is the product? Well, actually, very excitingly, I've got some new colors. So uh, we can draw on the product in um, a different color. So we see on the, the region up to half of the period, um, the effect is to just scale the cosine wave by the the, the, by the value h here. So this height here, this is h. So what do we get? Well, we just get a cosine that starts here and goes down, something like that. And then at half the period, the sine flips. And so we just multiply the cosine wave by minus h. So we flip up here, and then we get minus the cosine wave. And it looks like that. So this... Uh, very funky fluorescent curve. This is e of t cos omega t. And this is the thing that we have to integrate. We integrated over one period, but now you can actually straight away just see what this integral is going to be from the picture. And you see actually that this area cancels with this area. And similarly, this area cancels with this area. So this whole integral actually is just equal to zero. So a1 is equal to zero. And maybe this is uh, ringing more bells in the back of your mind. Whenever you have um, an odd function and you find its Fourier series, um, uh, you, 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 these coefficients will always be zero. Um, okay, great. Let's do the. Um, let's find the the b one coefficient. Uh, so, let's do the same thing. Draw on a set of axes, and let's just try and sketch out what our e of t sine omega t signal is going to be. Well, this time we have a sinusoid. E of t is the same. Uh, so e of t now looks like that. Uh, so I didn't label it on here, but so orange was e of t, this is e of t, and then this is sine omega t. And what is the product? Well, here the signs are the same, so we just get a scaling of the sine wave like before. And here both the signs are negative, so when we take their product, the effect is to just get the same thing, but now mirrored. So this curve here, this is e of t sine omega t. And so now what do you notice? You notice that this area here is equal to this area here. So actually we only need to perform the integral um, over, the, over the first half of the period of our sinusoid. And what is this curve equal to on that first half? Well, this is just equal to h times sine omega t. So to simplify this integral, this is just equal to 4 over t integral t over 2 and 0. So we just have to integrate over half of the period, but double the size. And now we substitute in for e of t sine omega t. So that is just equal to h sine omega t dt. And now we just have a nice straightforward integral to do. And so what do we get? Well, we have a 4h over t, and the integral of sine omega t is minus cos omega t over omega. We need to evaluate this between uh, 0 and t over 2. So what's this equal to? Well, this is equal to 4h over t, and now we have minus, now cos omega t, but t is equal to 
2 pi over omega. Uh, so what do we get? So t over 2 is just pi over omega. So we have minus cos omega times pi over omega. So that's just cos pi, all divided by omega. And then plus cos of 0 over omega. And this is just equal to 8h over t times 1 over omega, but t times omega is just equal to 2 pi. So this whole thing is equal to 4h over pi. So um, what is our describing function equal to? Well, this is then just equal to, well, b1, which is 4h over pi, a1 is 0, and a. And there we have it. We have found our very first describing function. Thank you.